Hello and welcome to our second live Tell Me More About session this evening. For the next 20 minutes, we'll dive deeper into the topic of fixed restorations combining teeth and implants with Professor Florian Boyer. And remember, we are still live, although it's getting late at night, so make sure you make the most of this session by submitting any questions you might have. They will end up right here on my desk on my little iPad. We're live for 20 minutes, so make sure you do that. Now, Florian Boyer is now joining us live from Germany. Good evening, Florian. Thank you for being with us. Where are you tonight? Good evening, everybody. I'm sitting in my office in Berlin, actually. So uh, I'm in Berlin. Unfortunately, the AO and the Live Congress is not in Berlin. Exactly. Yeah, you're the only one in the place where we would have been. Uh, Berlin is a bit of a trip, I think, because you are a professor at the dental school in Munich. Is that correct? Uh, I was a professor at the dental school in Munich, but five years ago, uh, I took over the chair position of the Prost department at the Charité in Berlin. So Berlin is now my is now my your home new place. hometown. Great. Now, and uh, this light late at night, you will tell us more about the. Uh, you will teach us more about combining dental implants with the natural teeth in a fixed restorations. Now, earlier tonight, we learned a lot about removable restorations combining teeth and implants. So I would like you to uh, give us a short introduction of the key things we need to know before we dive deeper into the topic with you. So if we have a look at this picture, at this beautiful picture on the first sight, at first sight, it's just a bridge. But uh, 31 years ago, it was really a, a bridge combining two completely different worlds. On the left-hand side, there was the free world, there was the Western Berlin part, and on the right-hand side, there was Eastern Germany, Potsdam. And then I think you all are familiar with German history. Today, it's just a bridge. It's just a bridge com combining two different sides of a river. So we have to ask ourselves the question, is the situation when we combine natural teeth and implants, is it like it was 35 years ago, combining two completely different worlds, or is it just a bridge over two abutments? We know that those time, types of restorations are frequently used in private practice. However, when we have a look into the available scientific literature, we find that there is a very, very limited number of studies. And we performed a systematic review and published this two years ago. And there were only eight studies available that were really included in this scientific review. And you see, the whole scientific evidence we have is just on the basis of not more than 185 restorations with a clinical follow-up of three to 10 years. And as you see, there are not so many publications in the recent years, the, those papers were published within 30 years. So every four years in in average, we have a paper about this topic. And um, yeah, I really would like to discuss this a little bit with you. What is it about when we talk about combining those two different abutments, the natural tooth and the implant with a fixed restoration? Exactly. Well, uh, thanks for the brief introduction, uh, Florian. Is it just a bridge? Let's find out. Um, let's start with the very basis. Why and when? are we most likely to choose an option that combines both the teeth and the implants? Can you elaborate on that? Yes, when we have uh, clinical situations with a reduced number of uh, natural teeth, and we have to choose about uh, a prosthetic concept, and we have, we have to differentiate or we have to discuss with the patient, do we want to go for a removable concept or we, do we want to go for a fixed concept? Then we know from the prosthetic point of view, that we have, will have less problems when we go for a fixed concept. However, a lot of our patients have financial limits, have limits with their, uh, with their willingness to do surgery. And so it's really the question, do we also, or are we able to perform a fixed restoration concept with a limited number of implants? And for those situations, for those clinical situations, I think it's really, both about thinking how to combine natural, the, the remaining teeth with some implants with fixed restorations. 
Exactly. So is it correct to assume that the key driver for this solution is, first of all, saving teeth and secondly, reducing the amount of implants? Uh, yes, and also re reducing the amount of invasiveness and also reducing the costs. Exactly. So these are very clear motives of why we want to uh, consider this type of restoration. Now, you already pointed out the scientific evidence about this, a relatively low number of papers, although the technique has been around for a while. Let's start with why. Why do you think that is? Why is there so lack of, of studies to this solution? Um, I think that it's really a lot of colleagues are really afraid of um, of the complications because uh, some years or 30 years ago we thought that we have different movements of the natural tooth and the implants and th so it's it might be a problem to combine those two different abutments and um, so historically the a prosthetic solution was to use a T attachment an open T attachment to combine those two different abutments and we we faced biological problems with the intrusion of the natural teeth when we followed this uh, prosthetic concept. And so I think um, the negative experience with a lot of those restorations led to, yeah, led to a decreasing interest in this concept, at least from the scientific point of view. Exactly. But for, so you say at least from the scientific point of view, is it still something that gets done quite a lot? What, what is your own experience? So my own experience um, is I did a clinical study on this um, with, uh, with all ceramic materials combining natural teeth and implants. And in my clinic, it's, it's not our primary solution for, for those patients. So we still do removable stuff. But uh, from time to time, we really consider this concept combining natural teeth and implants with fixed restorations. And when we do not have a better solution for the patient and when a lot of the cl uh, clinical situations are favorable for those concepts, we really perform also the combination of natural teeth and, and implants. Exactly. Now, you, you mentioned as, as one of the key reasons why there might need not be so much st studies is the, the fear of complications, you said, uh, of attaching an implant to a teeth. And obviously, we need to talk about the topic of mobility. When I was preparing for the session, I learned that obviously the, the implant doesn't move and teeth do. So how do you look at that aspect of the co potential complications? Um, you're absolutely right when you're when you compare, uh, compare the, the movement of a natural tooth and an implant, which is, I think the, the difference is the factor 10. And so, um, but of course, when you have, when you are loading your restoration, then uh, perhaps the mobility is not the primary issue. However, when we have a look into the, into the scientific data, we see that we have more complications when we combine teeth and implants compared to single crowns on, on implants, and also compared to um, bridges on implants. So, so you say we're better off than the alternative, and that's why I sometimes still choose for this solution. Um, so when we have to choose about a single crown on an implant and a, and a bridge on an implant and a, a natural tooth, of course, we have less complication with the single crown on an implant. But of course, just imagine the situation, you have two missing teeth, you place one implant and combine it with the posterior tooth, or you place two implants and two single crowns. It's a completely different situation also from the invasiveness and from the financial point of view. So this is the reason why in some situations, perhaps you go for the bridge to save one implant and just place one implant and also have your two teeth replaced. Exactly. And I'm thinking when you mention invasiveness, when you mention cost, these are really patient-related aspects of the treatment. Um, are there any biological reasons why you would choose such an option? Or is that just it? Um, from the biological point of view, of course, uh, we have to consider what is the natural, the natural tooth about. Does the natural tooth already have a crown? Then, of course, we consider it combining it with the, with the implant, with a bridge. If we have an untouched tooth without a filling, without a restoration, 
then perhaps the invasiveness is much higher when I do a tooth preparation compared to placing the two implants. Exactly. I see uh, we are live, Florian, and there's questions coming from our audience. I see a question here live, so if you're just joining us, make sure you type in. It's uh, from uh, Alberto Sanchez, and he's very curious to have some technical tips on the distance between the implant and the remaining teeth. Can you comment on that? Yes, so when we have a look into the, the literature, we only have available data on three and four unit uh, tooth implant supported bridges. So um, from this perspective, perhaps the, the largest distance would be two, the amount of two teeth, perhaps uh, one bicuspid and one molar. And this is perhaps we have the, the best performance, the best clinical performance on the three unit and the four unit restoration. So if you have a remaining canine, for example, uh, you place the, uh, the first molar and this is, and this is it. Exactly. And replace the two pike house bits. Now, very Which clear is a clinical, advice. Go ahead. A very common clinical situation that we have the from canine to canine, and then you place the first molar or the, the second pike house bit, and you just have a reduced arch, but you have a fixed solution with just two implants. All right. Well, uh, thank you for answering. I think Alberto should be happy with that. Um, another question from an audience coming in. In the posterior area, do you think that attaching a short implant to a tooth can improve its prognosis? Uh, the prognosis of the tooth? Uh, I, I assume so. Well, and, and maybe of the entire treatment plan. Um, of course, all the studies we have, they were not dealing with short implants. So uh, perhaps this is a very interesting point or interesting topic for a new scientific project. How, to, uh, how are the, the short implants performing when they are combined with natural teeth? Uh, we do not have, have evidence for that, that we can really have a positive effect on the natural tooth when we combine it to an implant, unfortunately. Okay. And uh, what about anything else specifically that we keep in mind when we consider this uh, a solution for our patients? For example, about superstructures or other things that could aid us? So um, I think the most important thing is that we really connect our natural tooth and the implant in a rigid way. So without any open attachment systems, I think the easiest solution is really to have a cemented solution on the abutment, on the implant, and on the natural tooth, permanently cemented. And uh, when we have a look at the material or the data we have on the material, then um, unfortunately, we just have 10 years uh, data on metal ceramics. We do not have clinical data on all ceramic materials. So perhaps when you would ask me to do such a restoration today, I would use zirconia. I would use in the posterior monolithic zirconia. Unfortunately, we do not have any clinical data on that. Um, we just have clinical data on metal ceramics and, um, and this, the study I did, but I just published the three years results. So uh, we do not have further uh, long-term long results more than three years when we are talking about all ceramics combining natural teeth and implants. Exactly, so that's further work to be done. Now, earlier tonight, we learned about that it really becomes interesting if we talk about our failures. Let's zoom in on the topic of complications uh, a little bit. What, what are typical things that can go wrong in this solution? What, what should we really keep an eye out for? So we, we, have, we have the classical complications when we are talking about uh, yeah, when we are talking about veneering ceramics uh, on substructures on implants so that we have minor complications of ceramic failures. I think this is not a major failure, but we have to consider this as a, as a technical problem. We, or in some clinical studies, there was also a problem about the abutment. Uh, they, they, they worked with welded abutments and they had a failure of these abutments. The, the, Complication I'm most, I'm most afraid of is really uh, that I do not see a loss of retention on the natural abutment and that I, that I have secondary carriers that I cannot detect in the regular recall appointment and, um, and that this leads to perhaps problems with the natural tooth and uh, in the last consequence 
uh, might lead to the extraction of the natural tooth. I think we have really be careful about that. Exactly. So that's kind of a negative side effect that we should really keep an eye on when we see these patients in our uh, practices. Good, good pointing. I have a, a, a last audience question I think that we still have time for from uh, Javed Ikram. And he says, would you say a cantilever type bridge on implants has fewer complications than combining implants to teeth? That's a, that's a very good question, actually. Um, we have data com combining cantilever bridges on natural teeth, and we are better with the combination of implant and natural tooth with the fixed restoration when we compare this to the cantilever bridges on natural teeth. However, we have data that we should not have a cantilever larger than eight millimeters when we are having a cantilever on an implant. So, um, yeah, because uh, then we might have a higher marginal bone loss compared to shorter cantilevers. So when the limit is eight millimeters, um, perhaps when we want to go further than eight millimeters, then uh, the combination of the tooth and the implant is the better solution. Exactly, wow. Florian, as you can see, time flies when we're having fun, even when it's 11 p.m. here in France and Germany already. So um, I'm going to thank you for this contribution for now. I'm going to thank all our viewers for submitting so lively all these questions during the Tell Me More About session. Please keep doing that in all the future sessions over the next coming week. And um, in case you submitted a question that didn't get, uh, didn't get picked up here in the session, you can now go to the uh, channel 8 after discussions lounge and chat with Florian and perhaps some of the other participants for the next 30 minutes or so if you can uh, stay up late that long.